okay so uh, we are going to do occlusion and as you know occlusion is a very vast chapter um, but we don't need everything for ADC just the basic points that we need for the ADC are uh, I'll be sending you in the lecture notes but uh, our aim of today's uh, video is how to approach the questions that you see in the ADC exam so there are very few questions very typical questions that they usually ask so I'll just be telling you some mnemonics and some uh, aids with which you can solve those questions okay now when we talk about the occlusion the first thing that they can ask usually or anybody can ask is the normal occlusion now when you see the normal occlusion you see that suppose this is your tooth so you will have a buccal view and then you will have a lingual okay let us suppose this is a buccal this is mesial and this is distal now remember that when you are doing it for the buccal then you have to remember two things one when you are telling with respect to maxilla and the second when you are telling with respect to mandible now let's do first that you are uh, looking at your teeth from the buccal view and you are doing it with respect to maxilla when you are doing with respect to maxilla remember the word embrasure and the groove so you have to remember these two things embrasure and groove now what do i mean i mean because i said with respect to maxilla so i mean that your maxillary tooth or maxillary teeth they will fall into the buccal embrasure between the opposite arch okay so buccal embrasures of mandibular teeth so this was the keyword buccal second keyword was embrasure third word was with respect to maxilla that means the maxillary tooth will fall into the buccal embrasure of the opposite tooth and also the tooth distal to it now what does it mean these are the keywords buccal distal maxilla embrasure and grooves right now what does it mean it means for example you have your maxillary premolar second let's suppose you want to know where will this tooth occlude now this tooth will occlude into the buccal embrasure between the mandibular which one same that is premolar 2 and i said one tooth distal to it so premolar 2 and molar 1 so again i am repeating this thing when you are doing the normal occlusion you have two three uh, things that you have to keep in mind first is what is the question asking about if the question is asking about a maxillary tooth and it is talking about the buccal aspect then you have to remember that when it is a maxillary tooth and the question is asking about the buccal aspect remember the words embrasure and group so this tooth maxillary tooth will fall into or will be occluding into uh, an area in between the or uh, an embrasure which is formed by the same mandibular tooth and a tooth distal to it for example the if we talk about the premolar second maxillary so it's buccal aspect it will fall into the premolar second the embrasure between the premolar second and the molar first this is the distal tooth this is the same and this is the distal molar is distal to premolar so this is the embrasure area in which this buccal is going to fall okay now when we do like this we have a certain other teeth for example we started with the premolar second now we can uh, do same for the molar first so when we do for the molar first let us suppose this is molar first so what did we say we said this will fall into the same as well as in the uh, distal tooth okay so for maxillary premolar too you know this will fall between the embrasure of the 
premolar second and the molar first now is the molar first now the problem is that molar first is going to have two buccal cusp one is the mesiobuccal and one is the distobuccal okay so we have to tell about both of them mesiobuccal and the distobuccal now the second keyword was the grooves so now the grooves will come into play so what we can say is for the occlusion of the maxillary first molar we have two cusps one is the mesiobuccal and one is the distobuccal now this mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar it will fall into the groove because obviously the molar underlying molar is going to be a big one okay so it will fall into the groove see this is the same tooth this molar is the same tooth so this is not the embrasure this is the groove so that means mesiobuccal cusp will fall into the groove of the mandibular first molar okay and the distobuccal cusp it will fall in the distobuccal groove of the mandibular first molar right so again this is the distobuccal because there is going to be a third cusp here a small distal cusp here as well so i am repeating the same thing again first when the question is about the buccal aspect and when the question is talking about where the maxillary tooth occludes in the mandibular it will either be embrasure if an embrasure is present or a groove if the grooves are present in the bigger teeth grooves will be present between a smaller and the bigger tooth there will be embrasures present okay so if it is an embrasure embrasure will be because i said embrasure will be between the two uh, teeth so that embrasure will be one same tooth and second the distal tooth to this tooth so suppose this is a premolar second that will fall into the buccal aspect will fall into the buccal embrasure of mandibular premolar second and the molar one now if it is a bigger tooth obviously there will be the grooves so the mesiobuccal will fall into the groove which groove obviously this one okay so it will fall into the mesiobuccal groove of the mandibular first molar and distobuccal will fall into distobuccal groove of the mandibular first molar now the third thing that they can ask is where will the oblique ridge you all know that on the occlusal aspect of the maxillary teeth maxillary molars there is an oblique ridge so the oblique ridge of the maxillary first molar it will fall there will be a developmental groove in the mandibular first so it will fall in the developmental groove between the distobuccal and the distal cusp there will be a developmental groove forget about that thing thing all you need to remember is mainly the premolar second and the molar first the first and the second cusp and this you know that in the question you have to look for the keywords embrasures and grooves if it is talking about the buccal aspect of the maxillary teeth okay now let's suppose they are talking about the second molar so if they are talking about the second molar again the second molar will be having a mesiobuccal and a distobuccal cusp so the mesiobuccal cusp of the second molar it will go into the buccal groove because here you had two grooves mesiobuccal and distobuccal in the lower one you will simply have one buccal groove so it will fall into this buccal groove of the mandibular second molar now wherever it falls the easiest way to find in the question is look for embrasures and groove why i am talking about the embrasures and grooves is because uh, there is some uh, there are some points where they uh, in some of the options they might write fossas and ridges and everything so the first and the foremost thing when you see that the question is about the maxillary teeth and the buccal view cross the uh, choices which are talking about the fossas and ridges pick up the choices which are talking about the embrasures and the grooves okay now another thing how to summarize this thing so in the normal occlusion 
first is if they are talking about where does the maxillary tooth fall okay so when they are talking about when they uh, are asking you about where the maxillary tooth falls then you have one thing and if they are talking about where is the mandibular tooth occluding then you have the other thing okay so when they are talking about the maxillary tooth the first thing we said if they are talking about the labial view or the buccal view that suppose they ask where does the mesiobuccal cusp of the uh, maxillary first molar falls so now mesiobuccal that means they are asking about the buccal view and they are asking about where does the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar falling so that means they are talking about the maxilla so the keywords that you have to look are the embrasures and grooves of the mandibular teeth okay embrasures or the grooves they are the keywords you will look into the mcqs now the another thing they might ask about where does the mesial uh, lingual or the palatal okay so when they are talking about the lingual or the palatal view or the cusps then you have to remember that when they are talking about the maxilla and the lingual or the palatal then you have to look for the fossas and ridges of the opposite teeth for example you can look for the triangular fossa in the premolar okay so you can look for the these words fossas and ridges now how to remember this thing the easiest way to remember this is l r f so l is that when they are talking about the lingual view or the palatal view always remember you have to look for the ridges and the fossas and b e g back when they are talking about the buccal view then what you have to look about is the embrasures and the grooves okay so this is with respect to maxilla now when they are talking about the mandible just remember one thing that when they are talking about the buccal view of the mandibular then you have to look for the fossas and ridges of the opposite teeth for example the triangular fossa in the premolar okay so i'll be explaining this thing or i'll be giving you notes on this mandibular teeth in the class but like i explained for the maxilla uh, that this is the buccal view i explained to you guys same way there will be the lingual and same way there will be the mandibular those notes i'll be giving you in the class but as of now just remember these things that this is the summary that you have to remember so now this was about the normal occlusion that you will uh look into when you are trying to know your answers okay now i am just going to show you the lingual view of uh, one maxillary tooth now when we are talking about the lingual view of the maxillary teeth for example this is your premolar second this is your molar first and this is your premolar second this is your molar first this is the mesial view uh, this is the distal side and we are looking at the lingual view okay what did we say we said when you are looking at the maxillary teeth and you are looking at the lingual views then you have to look for the fossas and ridges okay so the question asks that where will the maxillary molar first its mesiolingual cusp falls now this will be the mesio and because we are uh, we are having a lingual view so this will be the mesiolingual cusp this is falling here so you will say what did we say when this is a lingual view we will talk about either fossas and ridges so this is the fossa we will not be talking about the grooves and embrasures or anything okay grooves if this is a buccal view but we are talking about the lingual so we will be talking about the fossa so you will say that this mesiolingual cusp it falls into the fossa central fossa of the mandibular first and the distolingual cusp this second thing was ridge so here will be the ridge okay so the distolingual cusp of the maxillary first molar it will fall in the distal marginal ridge of the mandibular first and because this is the 
distal marginal ridge this is the mesial marginal ridge so you will say that this cusp that is the mesio uh, sorry the distal lingual cusp is falling into the is falling in between the distal marginal ridge of first molar and here will be your second molar so this will be the mesial side of the second molar and mesial marginal ridge of your second molar okay so this is how you will be doing this was just an example same way we will be doing for the premolar second and the molar second and those notes again as i said i'll be giving you in the class okay now after we have done this thing there is one another important uh, key how to answer the questions uh, when when they ask you about what side it has got the interferences and how you will eliminate those interferences for a normal occlusion see again this is a very conceptual thing and uh, we'll be doing it in the class during the lecture but this is a mnemonic how to approach it now how to approach such questions are first of all you should be aware of the keywords now the keywords are that you should know what are the functional cusps so when you are uh, talking about the functional cusps there are so many of the things 